I don't know about you guys, but I'm personally sick and tired of boring renders. That's why today I want to show you exactly how you can create this beautiful render in no time at all. What's going on guys? My name is David Tomich and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking any single project that you might have and transferring it into Twin Motion. Twin Motion would be the basis of this tutorial. If it's something that you have, if it's not, you can use any rendering software. The principles are the same. Eventually, once we export that photo out of Twin Motion, we take it into Photoshop and then finally we take it into Lightroom. Now I'm going to explain all of these steps very simply and very easily because this tutorial can be done by almost any level of skill. So without further ado, let's turn around to these two screens and get started. Okay, so you wanna start by opening up whatever project you plan on creating this render with. I'm gonna start with this realistic project that is an actual project in real life, but obviously it doesn't exist on a beautiful floating lake surrounded by the forest. To create this render in twin motion, we do need to create a fake mountain around it just to really simplify the process. If we don't, then we're gonna be dragging trees up and down like crazy and it just becomes too hard. So what I've done here in ARCHICAD 24 is use the mesh tool to quickly create just a mountain surrounding the actual house itself. So all it is is a mesh brought up and then I've created about five meters of water underneath it. It doesn't matter what it is because it will eventually be cropped out. So what we need to do is open up Twin Motion by going Twin Motion direct link and starting a new project. Okay, so we have Twin Motion 2020.2 open in front of us and it seems like we're already halfway there. Twin Motion does most of the work for you when you import from ArcCAD or anything else, which is great. So what we wanna start with is the actual contents and the material. I'm gonna try to run through this tutorial very quickly, but also give you as much information as you possibly need to know. We can see that the mountains behind us are just big white rocks. If we go into our material library, come into ground, nature, and scroll to the bottom, you're gonna see uh, midway through mossy rocks if we throw mossy rocks on top and drag them all the way up to about 10 scale we can see it starts to create an almost mountain like effect it's not that important because they're going to be absolutely covered with trees very quickly down the bottom what we want to do is change that water from ArchiCAD straight to actual water from twin motion so we start using the C object it doesn't matter what material you use from here you can use a pool the pool to the river the lake, the sea, it doesn't matter, we're gonna be photoshopping it out. We also wanna do a little bit of work on the house to make it easier for ourselves. So depending on what kind of render you do, you wanna make the house still look quite nice. So personally, this is meant to be a concrete house, so we're gonna go poured concrete, scale it to three, so we can see that's roughly the size of a concrete panel. That would be a very challenging concrete panel, nonetheless, it's okay. This is meant to have some sort of materiality, some sort of texture, but it doesn't really and the sides of the walls are coming out as well. So I'm gonna change the size of the walls, metal with some brushed aluminium in the dark black color, because it's also the window frames, I believe. And then we're gonna change the rest of the building into a dark wood. So we're gonna rotate at 90 degrees, scale, rotate 90 degrees, and then change the color of that wood directly to black. Now, it's again, at the end of the day, this is your project, you can do whatever you want with it. It can be a completely different house, it can be a completely different color scheme, the concept is still gonna work exactly the same. We don't really have to touch too much of the rest of the building because it's pretty much set up exactly how I want it. What we do wanna do is make sure that the glass is reflective, so we start getting the nature coming around and reflecting on that glass later on. We actually do that in Photoshop, not in Twin Motion, because Twin Motion just isn't very good at showing good glass. Now, the next step is creating the trees and the forest that you see in the photo. There is a number of ways to do it. You can click like a madman with the trees, go into trees. I'm using this Colorado tree for this photo here. You can use any tree you'd like, again, completely up to you. So like I said, you can click like a madman and go to town, or you can go to context, vegetation, paint, and drop that tree in so you can actually paint like a madman. Now, painting these trees on, as you can see, scatters them quite far away and it doesn't actually make it very forest-like. So in this instance, I am gonna click like a madman. I'm gonna skip past this bit and show you the completed project of me clicking for like five minutes straight. 
Okay, and there we have it. My finger is very sore, but we have a forest surrounding our building. Now, we may need a couple more. We need, may need to change a few bits and pieces, but we're gonna find that out when we start setting up our render scenes. What we wanna do before we actually finish off and start creating that render scene is clicking a few of these trees at absolute random and then just increasing the age of these trees so it isn't all identical. We do wanna emphasize the rear row with some aged trees and some larger trees. So we're just gonna scale them up all the way to create the valley-like effect. Now, I think I'm gonna need a lot more trees on this side but let's start by setting up our render. What we wanna do is find the perfect spot for the house. So we click to create our first image and we wanna start somewhat close to the house. You can already see the house reflecting on the water down here, which means we're gonna have that much of the image flipped over when we take it into Photoshop. So that can be a really good indicator for you guys to know how much of the building to showcase if you need to go back more, if you need to go closer, Again, that's completely up to you. So what we wanna do is line it up central or however you want because this is your image that you're rendering. So create it however you like. Try and position it so you're in line with the horizon. You're gonna be able to figure it out pretty quickly when you go below the water level because we are actually creating a mirrored effect. So what we wanna do is just line it up perfectly. I think that's just a little bit off. So I'm gonna try line it up a little bit better and save that image there. I personally don't think these trees are all the right size, so I'm gonna make a couple of them bigger again. The one thing you do wanna do is create a secondary image looking the opposite way. The opposite way just needs to be a large amount of trees and nothing else really. So we come back to the house and create our second image of literally just trees. You can either do it directly behind or you can also do it behind the actual house where you already have hundreds of hundreds of trees built. So completely up to you, but you do need a secondary image for the reflection of the windows that I'm gonna show you in Photoshop in just a minute. So we're gonna create that second image of just trees. Okay, so now if we go back to image one, this is where it becomes critical. You wanna set up all of your settings perfectly so you don't have to mess with it later. If you wanna have it on Instagram, change the format from full HD, more custom, and change it to 4,000 by 5,000. That's the perfect Instagram ratio. For now, we're gonna change that to full HD and we're gonna do the same for image two. The image already isn't perfect. There's a lot of lighting issues going on. So we wanna try and create the best lighting scenario possible. Personally for me, I always use Perth, Western Australia because that's where I am. So I know where the settings are. You can use them however you want. It's completely up to you. But I like to have that golden sun coming through. So we're gonna bring it up to an earlier time maybe August, change that north point. So the sun definitely starts coming through and shining. There we go, that's really pretty. And we're gonna keep getting a little bit on the left side there. Okay, so we've positioned it so the sun's coming in nice and early, it's nice and golden, and we have some different textures going on. The background doesn't really matter because you can't see it in this instance. And what we also want to do is change the lighting. Personally, I think the lighting in Twin Motion at the moment is just horribly wrong. So we want to push the shadows to about 500, go to the settings, and this sun is cranked up way too high. I like to bring that down to about 5,000, and then you can see the scene change. So if we go back to our image and go back to our location, we have to just amend that time a little bit more so we get the lighting correct, but it's not as harsh, it's not as overpowering, and it doesn't absolutely ruin your image anymore. Okay, so they're roughly the settings I'm gonna be using for this render now. And all we really have to do at this point is export it and take it into Photoshop. So if you don't know how to export, all you have to do is come down to the export button, click on the images and select all, and then click export. Okay, so now that our image is exported, it is looking fantastic, and you could go ahead and post something like this and it would look great. But we wanna take it to that absolute next level. And the way we do this is relatively simple. So the first thing you wanna do is replace the sky. Number of ways to do that in Photoshop, but the easiest way is edit, come down to sky replacement, and it will automatically replace the sky for you. It's fantastic and it's super easy. I've used this gray sky by simply Googling gray sky and importing it 
by going down here and clicking the little plus sign. You can select any sky you want. So if you see, I can click on this one and it will change it, the sky straight away. I can click on a nice beautiful sunset and it will change it to that. You can go through any absolute sky you want, import any sky you want and it will look a million dollars in two clicks of a button. Then what you want to do is move the panel over a little bit so you can see the edge of the trees. Play with these sliders until you're happy with the image quality itself. Personally, I like to shift the edge a little bit, play with the textures and the tones just to make it seem a little bit more natural. If the sky isn't in the right position for you, you can just click and move it whilst that sky replacement software is still open. So I probably personally want it somewhere a bit there. Oh, I think I've gone too far and lost that little bit of the sky there. And there we go, I'm happy with that. So my sky replacement is done. Now, because we are flipping and mirroring this image, we wanna highlight everything, go Control E or Command E, whatever you're working on and group them into one image. So now we have our image, but the windows are still pretty average. What we wanna do is go through and marquee every one of these windows to be able to mask over our image of just trees. So we start by bringing in our tree image of just trees and painting it over top. I'm gonna to hide that layer for the time being and zoom into my windows. I'm gonna use my lasso tool to outline every one of these windows so I can cut in those trees in front of this. So I'm gonna speed through this part again, but it's literally just clicking through and selecting your window. You wanna make sure that this double square is clicked, otherwise you're not gonna be able to continuously keep going. So I'll see you guys in a second when I've highlighted all of these windows. Okay, so now we have all of our windows marqueed and that took a little while, but you wanna make sure they are very clean lines, otherwise it just looks sloppy. So we wanna activate our tree layer again to be able to implement that reflection. So we turn out on our tree layer and we can still see that we're cutting out all of those trees there. So what we do is command copy, well, control, command, whatever you're using, and then control, shift, V to make sure they paste in the exact same place. Now, that definitely looks unrealistic. We want to reduce the opacity quite far down to maybe about or 18%, if not even lower, just so we get that nice reflection coming through. Now's the time we flip mirror and make it look so much better. So once again, very similar to how we did it with the sky, we're gonna select all the layers by holding shift and clicking command E to reduce them in to one layer. I'm gonna use my rulers to find the absolute best flipping point. So for me, it's probably about there. And then I'm gonna use my polygonal lasso which if you click and hold, you can find the polygonal lasso and cut out the top part of our image. We wanna go Control C, Control Shift V and paste an absolute replica of the top half. We also wanna marquee the bottom half and delete the bottom half of our entire image. So that's gonna make a lot of sense in a little minute. We're gonna take our top layer, our bottom layer, whichever one you want, they're identical, flip them vertically and drag them down to the bottom. So now our image is already starting to look a lot better, but we aren't just there just yet. We wanna add one more layer, drag it to the bottom, come over to the paint bucket and paint that layer black entirely. The last thing you have to do is come over to your bottom layer and reduce the opacity to 50%. That gives it the optical illusion of that mirrored black water. Okay, so that's two out of three steps completed and that image is already looking fantastic. However, there is one last step that you can take to make this image look so much better. And this step is completely optional. It's up to you if you like that style or not, but personally, I think it isn't there just yet. So what we're gonna do is highlight them all, merge them again, go file, save as, save it to our desktop, as a PNG, we'll name it Lake House. Now we're gonna take that image into Lightroom. Okay, okay, so now we have that image imported into Lightroom and there is a million and one different ways you can color grade any image. 
but I've gone ahead and created my own presets specifically for twin motion exports. If you wanna download them and make your life so much easier, there's a link down in the description. They're only about nine Australian dollars, so they're very cheap. They're not very expensive, but they make images look so, so much better. So on the side, I've already imported all my presets and there's a number of different options. We can have a dark, moody winter look or we can have a more vibrant, autumn look. Personally, I'm liking the autumn external look for this image here. So I'm gonna stick with that and it's already, if we just flick through, you can see a huge difference in that color grading. So there's not too much more I really wanna change here. I might use the paintbrush tool to just paint over this sky a little bit because it's a little bit dark for me in my opinion and do the same down the bottom. Okay, so I've painted over that much of the sky and that much of the water with the settings here on the right hand side. All I'm gonna do is click done and that image is completed. The Lightroom section of this tutorial is incredibly simple purely for the fact that I've already set up my presets and made them available for you guys as well. So if you do wanna support me out as a creator and as an architect, just simply download the presets and you can create something just as special as this in absolutely no time. Anyway, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. If you have any questions for me, please leave a comment. I do check them very often and I try to reply to every single person. I usually tend to just reply to the new comments, so don't bother re-replying, just post another comment and I will get back to you. But until then, I will see you in the next one.